gentle scrapping under the influence. I am here with a brand new project for you with a full tutorial using Doodlebug So Much Fun. So this is, I haven't done a big album in a long time. So this is a big album. It is nine and a half by nine and a half with a two inch spine. There are four graduated pages in here. This has an acetate cover with a magnetic closure and my little kid on his little tube actually spins on that cover when um, your magnet is not attached. So on the front here I did use the Doodlebug Snowflake Acetate and the Mix and Match Snowflake set um, that is available at Country Craft Creations. So that's what these three big ones are and then these are smaller um, snowflakes from the Bits and Pieces set. This little Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow is from the Chit Chat, and he, of course, is from the Odds and Ends. I did mat him on some navy blue artisan cardstock. When you open this up, on the back side, we've got another little piece from the Chit Chat just to hide my little mechanism there to make him spin and to hide my magnet. The other pieces from the Mix and Match Snowflakes are on the back, and then corresponding... Um, snowflakes just to hide the the um adhesive which i will say with the snowflake acetate you don't really see it especially if you use clear i used the um ultra strong uh for the um easy runner grand tape runner also available at country craft creations um, I really didn't need to do that, but I wanted something a little bit different. And then this is from the This and That sticker sheet. For the front part of the cover that is underneath the uh, acetate, I didn't add anything other than just patterned paper there. I almost, almost left it just completely blank because really it was so pretty with just that navy cardstock and then the, um, the snowflake acetate on top. But... Of course, I had my magnet I needed to cover up, so um, I did end up doing that. So here's your two-inch spine. I did just the beautiful gradient trees on the back. And then, um, yeah, so let's get into it. So as you can see, the pages in this are also graduated. And I apparently didn't get him over far enough because I just made his ear. Um, four pages that are six, seven, eight, and nine inches wide, and they are all nine inches high. Um, over here, and I meant to do some tags to stick in there because that is actually a pocket on the back. I've got just a five by five flip out here with four flaps that I'll close in and then a magnetic closure. Here I've used one of the three by eight um, journaling cut aparts for this flap. On the inside here, this is actually the tag sheet that I just cut the tag part off of the top and used those going across just because it was pretty and I liked it. Uh, we've got the snowman paper here. This flips up and I glued this completely down, which I did not mean to do, but that's okay. And then we've got just some little tuck spots here. I did actually put my top one up too high so my other little cut apart wouldn't fit there, but that's okay. You can space those however you want. In the tutorial, I actually had you cut five of these. Um, I only ended up using three of them. And um, again, that's up to you. You could use all five and then use those tags, turn sideways and stack them in there. And that would work as well. So I've got another magnetic closure here, and then I have an insert. So my insert, so the page base for this is six inches. The top part of the page is five inches, so you have that one inch. And I used the new Glamour Artisan Glitter cardstock. This stuff does not shed. It is amazing. I love it. I love it. I love it. It cuts beautifully, um, and it's just, it's super sparkly. It's just it, it doesn't do it justice on camera. I, I'll tell you that right now. So inserts. Each one of these has an insert. In the tutorial, I had you cut them eight and eight. They're all eight and three quarters high. And then this was originally five and a half wide. 
And then I decided it was actually sticking out this way further than I wanted. So I actually cut it down to five inches. So just take half an inch off the measurements on all of those if you want them to not completely come out over that edge there. So this is just little booklet style. This is the new 65 pound artisan cardstock for matting. It is smooth, it is awesome. Um, I did use that on all of these inserts. And then I added my little penguin there so that my little animals are peeking off the side of my inserts on my graduated pages. So very, very simple there. On our next page, we've got um, a flap here with a magnetic closure because this was my other little insert that was supposed to go with my tuck spots that didn't fit. So I repurposed him. This is actually a belly band here and of course here so you can add some more inserts if you wanted to. This page I kept it very simple with just a photo mat. Of course, this is not glued down, so you can put um, a picture there. That is a five by seven photo mat there. Um, this insert, again, I've got my little guy hanging off the end. This one is six by eight and three quarters. And just kept those very simple because, of course, you don't want to get too crazy with that with them being inserts. Uh, kept this one very simple, too, just because we did have a little bit thicker here and then on this one. So again, I've just got photo mats and then my little odds and ends pieces and my chit chat pieces there. Um, next insert, again, this one, instead of it being a booklet, I did um, end up cutting it so it is just a single page. You could actually do that with all of these inserts and it would be fine. The reason I ended up doing that, and in the tutorial I had you cut it as a booklet, is because by the time I got this page element on here, it made that insert really kind of tight. So I ended up cutting it down. So um, this, got another magnet here, folds out both ways. We've got our little mountains here where you can put pictures and journaling and whatnot. I didn't do any additional decoration on these. I just left them as is. This is from the six by six paper, as is the matting on both of these little peaks are from the six by six pad. Um, and then I've added, of course, my chit chat, my odds and ends pieces there. On the back side here, we've got just stacked pockets, super easy with a little magnetic closure with another one of those three by eight journaling mats. This piece is from the chit chat. It does have magnets underneath. I did add the magnets after I had done the tutorial. Um, and all you're going to do is just attach them to the back side of your little barn door pieces that are going to slide out here so that you have a spot for a picture. And then that's just going to hold those closed when um, you're flipping pages in the book. And then I've got my last insert here with a bunch of those photo mats with that 65 pound artisan. And then our last page, we have a push waterfall five by seven there. Um, and then just a pocket with a little eighth inch gusset so you can you know load some things up in there. And my chit chat pieces. Um, and then there you go. I think I had something there and I don't remember now what it was. <laughs> I think it was from in fact, I know it was from the this and that sticker sheet, actually. I'm just going to put this little guy right here in the middle. So there we go. All right, so that is the project. Full tutorial plays next. As always, thank you for watching. If you end up making this project, please share it on Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations. You can also tag me on Facebook and Instagram at Scrapping Under the Influence. And um, there we go. Let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to start with chipboard. Nine and a half by nine and a half, nine and a half by six and a half, and nine and a half by two. You're going to cover the back of those with tape and start with my spine. So my cardstock to wrap my spine is five by 11 and a half. And I'm using 
the one piece spacers from Country Craft Creations. Oh, maybe I am. Get the back of my tape. Okay, tape all over the back. I'm just gonna use that. There we go. Set that one aside. Uh, for our swap out my one piece spacer with the one that has the one by one. The nine and a half by six and a half piece, you are going to wrap with a piece that is 11 and a half by eight and a half. Should wear a different sweatshirt because the sleeves do not want to stay up on this one. Maybe it's going to drive me insane. Backing off of this. Okay. Pass it again. And then for our last piece, nine and a half by nine and a half, your cardstock for this one is going to be eleven and a half by eleven and a half. Stock. So we're just going to use the chipboard to wrap the cardstock around. score tape and my scissors. I'm going to go ahead and miter my corners. Basically, we're just getting that square cut out of the corners. You can do it where you cut along your fold lines and then miter, or there's a couple of different ways people do this. So I'm going to go ahead and do the mitering on all three pieces. So I'm going to start with my spine piece. Sorry, my brain is just completely shut off today. So on the spine, all we're going to wrap are the top and bottom. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pull 
the backing off of my score tape on both ends. And then run glue along the edge of the chipboard. And then in our open space, okay. And then I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna burnish this down. And just work that cardstock down over the chipboard for the spine. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and run tape along the outside edge here. Okay. For the two cover pieces, we're going to wrap all four sides. So I'm going to go ahead and do my score tape around all four sides. off and then along with the chipboard finish up along the edge over and down repeat on all four sides on both cover pieces. One, Just the other, process again. For a minute. Take our spine and go ahead and adhere our cover to it. So you're doing this of course with the pretty side up. Lay that on top. And then down. Turn this around. Same thing again. And 
again on this piece or this part where I use the tape and the glue because the tape will help that cover grab immediately and I don't have to worry about it sliding because it's where it's supposed to be. Okay. That over. Have a piece to reinforce this inside. This is seven by nine and three eighths. The back of this is also completely covered in tape. And this is the one place where I do recommend that you absolutely do use tape and you do full coverage because you want this to lay perfectly flat. You don't want it to bubble. You don't want it to wrinkle. And using tape for this, you're guaranteed it's going to lay flat. Okay. All right. So now I can fold and burnish and get that down in the crease there. Fold this over. And I like to take and pinch that spine to set it. Okay? So there's our spine. So, next up, we're going to do our hinge. For the hinge, you need a piece of cardstock that is nine by five and a half. We are going to score this every half inch all the way across. So half inch, one inch, one and a half, two, oops, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, Four and a half, five. Okay. So there will be four pages. So I'm going to start partly in, fold that over and burnish it. Make sure everything's nice and straight. here. Hold and burnish. Make sure that's all nice and straight. And again, I started doing this just because it seems to help make sure that your hinge is folded straight before you glue it so that it's not crooked. Because even after having done, I don't even know how many at this point I have, like, I can't even tell you how many boxes of finished albums that I don't know what to do with, um, I still screw up the hinges on a regular basis. <laughs> okay, so those are good. So then I'm going to go ahead and fold in my end. And again... I'm going to make sure it's straight when it's folded, but not glued. And that should make gluing it and keeping it straight that much easier. Okay. So there's three pages, four pages. That too is why I'm starting in the middle on that, so that... I know it's straight to start with. And there we go. So now I can just go ahead and glue in the valleys on the back side. And again, I'm going to start in the middle. You don't need a ton of glue. And with your hinges, I do very much recommend you use glue for this and not tape. Tape tends to make the hinges 
much stiffer and then they don't seem to bend as well because I have done it both ways and overall glue just seems to work better. Okay, go there. the other way and this is just going to work our hinge so that it turns nicely once it's in the book and I start adding things and all of that fun stuff so all right so that of course is going to get centered up right here um if you want a mat underneath that I don't know is that one on there it is not I had a piece ready to go over here. I can use this for that. Aha, there we go. All right. So I'm going to mat underneath the hinge. Ooh. I'm going to go 9 and 3 eighths by 1 and 7. Down. Now I think I want to put little snowflakes. Okay. okay. I apologize. These sleeves are driving me crazy. I need to go upstairs and put on a t-shirt, but it's cold down here, so I don't really want to do that either. So, alright. So I'm going to line this up. I'm going to center it as best I can. And burnish that down. Okay, I'm going to set this aside and let that dry for a minute. Grab the scoreboard and we're going to make our page bases. So, the pages in this album are graduated. So, we have eight and three quarter, or I'm sorry, nine by nine. Okay, so nine by nine, this piece does not need to be scored. The piece that goes on top of it to form the page is going to be 8 by 10. You are going to score this with the 10 inch at the top of your scoreboard at half an inch. Turn half an inch. Okay. Next base is going to be 8 by 9. That one does not need scored. The piece for the top of that is 7 by 10. Again, half an inch, half an inch with the 10 inch at the top of the scoreboard. Next piece is going to be 9 by 7. Again, no scoring there. The piece that goes on the top is 10 by 6. So with the 10 inch at the top of the scoreboard, you're going to score half an inch. Turn, 
half an inch again. Last page base is going to be 9 by 6, no scoring. Piece for the top is 5 by 10. So again, 10 inch at the top, half an inch, turn, half an inch again. Okay. So, I'm going to grab my base. We're going to start from the back. So we're going to start with our 9 by 9 piece. Oh, we do need to put those on there. Just kidding. I'm ahead of myself. Okay. 9 by 9, 10 by 8. Okay. You're going to miter top and bottom. And this will go down on top like so. I'm trying to remember if it was easier. So, at this point, I'm going to do mine on top. If you wanted, you could take a sliver off the height of this so that those tabs wrap around. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to do them on top. Start on one side. exactly what I was supposed to do. Okay. Not a big deal. This side isn't totally dry yet. <laughs> Almost dry, but not totally dry. Alright, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to slip this on the bottom here, and then I'm actually going to glue that down on the top. In fact, I think I'm going to do that with all of them. Okay. So, I'm going to do that one last because I did get that screwed up. Okay, so what we're going to do, you're going to take your base. You're going to glue that to your hinge about an eighth of an inch or so from the center. And I actually made myself a little tool to help with this, but I'm not quite ready to show it to you guys yet, in part because I don't have the capability of scaling and making them for you guys. So I'm going to just kind of keep that to myself for now until I figure that, that much of it out. Um, but we're just going to go right onto the hinge and we're going to stay about an eighth of an inch up okay so see there there's my inside okay and we're going to take this piece we'll get a miter And we are 
we're gonna fold and burnish. This is going to go just right on top. Okay. So I am going to try and stay the same eighth of an inch out. Go all the way to the bottom. Turn it around and then come up. Down and down. Okay. Like so. You're going to repeat with the next one. I'm going to do the exact same thing again. Again, try to get it same distance out, which the way it's lined up, it's really not going to matter because it's on the opposite side. And then Time, then I'll go back and fix the other one that I screwed up. There. All right. So there we have our 
pages that, of course, you're going to see off the one side of the book. Um, I will come back and put my other one in after I fix it. But let's go ahead and put our inserts together right now. So, first insert. Eight and three quarters by eight and three quarters. I'm sorry. Eight and a half by eight and three quarters. Okay. Got a piece to go on top of that that is eight and a half, eight and three, I'm sorry, eight and three quarters by nine. You want your nine inch at the top of the scoreboard. You're going to score at half an inch. Miter. Fold and burnish. And then put it together. That simple. our biggest insert. Our next one is going to be eight and three quarters by seven and a half. And the top piece is going to be eight and three quarters by eight. With the eight inches along the top, you're going to score at half an inch. Let's see where I'm going with this. them together. Okay. The next one is going to be eight and three quarters by seven. I'm sorry, eight and three quarters by six and a half. The piece that goes on to make it to the booklet is eight and three quarters by seven, seven inches at the top. Scored half an inch. And then our last piece is going to be eight and three quarters by 11. And we're just going to score this one at five and a half. And then fold and burnish. Okay. Pretend my other page is in here. But so these are going to go in like so, so that about they're going to end up lining up about the edge of your pocket. If you want to cut some more off of that so that it sits down in there a little bit further, by all means, go right ahead. I think I might. I'll probably take half an inch off of each one of these. And then, of course, this is the one for the big one. All right. So let me get some other things together. I'll fix my last page, and I'll be back. 
Okay, so let's start with our front inside cover. So before I do anything on this, I have a blue line and a half right there. <laughs> um, we want to go ahead and map this. So I've got that cut and ready to go. Let me do it that way. Okay. Okay. So on top of that, we are going to do a pocket. Our pocket is six and a quarter by five and three quarters. We're going to score this starting with six inches at the top, half an inch, turn, half an inch, turn it, and half an inch again. And then we've got four flaps. All of the flaps are five and a half by five. You're going to score those at half an inch with the five and a half along the top. And then we've got a little closure piece that we're going to add a magnet to. And this was just a scrap. So this is two and one eighth by three and three quarters. And you're going to score this at half an inch and at five eighths of an inch. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do on these pieces is miter. I'm going to miter all of my flaps. And then the pocket, we're going to miter the top. And then I'm going to cut through the bottom corner where the score lines intersect, like so. Okay, so let's go ahead and burnish in our pocket. I'm literally just going to center this up. Let's start with my bottom flap. And I'm just going to eyeball it. Of course, if you want to be precise and measure it, go right ahead. And I'll do that bottom flap down. And then we'll get our sides. Okay, so next up, I'm actually going to glue my little tab on that is um, your closure. Okay, and I am going to go ahead and fold both score lines just so it's done and ready to go. I'm going to do that down here, centered up at the bottom about so okay so we've got four flaps two of these I am going to trim about a sixteenth of an inch off of the end so just a teeny bit mostly so that they'll fold in the way I want it to which they should be fine because they are slightly smaller than the actual pocket itself but just to be on the safe side if you're not sure when you lay these down how they're going to go it's always best. Okay, so I'm going to do my inside here. And you know what I was thinking because actually you don't need to take a hair off of those. Initially I had the pocket sized differently and I ended up recutting it and I didn't think about that until just now but that's okay. So side to 
side like so. And then we're gonna do top and bottom. I want to be okay. So then these are going to fold in, it's going to fold up, down, and then that's going to be our closure. So let's grab magnets and some score tape. So I've been out of the base of green magnets for a while, and the ones I have to put in their place are not adhesive. <laughs> But that's fine. It's not a problem. Okay, so I'm going to put that there. Line this up like so. Figure out which way my magnet needs to go. Close this over and down. And there we go. Got our closure. Okay, so. I don't have my element for here yet. Um, let's actually go to, yes I do, it's right there. Oh my gosh, okay. So what we've got here are a couple of flaps and then just some flat tuck spots which will go in after um, the uh, matting is done for that page. So the tuck spots, I've got five pieces that are just three inch by one inch, and we're just going to kind of put those in a line down the center, center of this after the fact. So I've got a flap that is three and five eighths by eight and one eighth, and we are going to score that at half an inch. Second flap is five by eight and a half, with the eight and a half at the top, you're going to score that one at half an inch. Go ahead and miter. And fold with burnish. And fold and burnish. I'm just going to center up on this side and I meant to round the corners on that before I put it in there. Forgot. Not a big deal. I can do it afterwards. But I am going to go ahead and round my corners here and where my other piece went. <laughs> Since I'm losing it here, I'm going to go ahead and round those as well. Okay. So like I was saying, this one is going to go along this edge here, centered up the edge of the pocket, or the edge of the page, right before our pocket, and then my other one is going to come down like so. So, like I said, this is five by eight and a half. I cut it just a hair under so that this piece can close down over the top of it. Okay. I am going to do some kind of closure here. I'm not entirely sure what. Most likely, 
I'll end up doing another magnet of some kind, which I might do it that way. I might just do it this way. I haven't decided, but for now I'm going to leave it as is. And then those will just get glued in underneath after that's matted. Okay. Let's see, I got it just slightly too close on that side, but that's okay. All right, so back side of page one, we've got a little flip piece that is 10 by 4. We're going to score that at 2.5 and seven and a half. We have a belly band that is five by five. You're gonna score that at half an inch and half an inch. And then another belly band that is 10 by four. You're gonna score half an inch, turn, and half an inch. I'm gonna go ahead and miter. Of course, because this is a belly band, you can slip your matting underneath so we don't need to worry about matting this page yet. Okay. Fold and burnish. This one is going to go top to bottom on this side, just center it up. I'm just going to center that up, glue it down. Okay. This one, the five by five is actually going to go the opposite direction. So you've got one this way and one this way. Good place to put tags, that kind of thing. Okay. And then our little flip piece, we're going to fold pieces in. We are going to round the corners. And then this one is going to sit right on top of the other belly band. Okay. Closure on this one, we'll end up using one of the cut aparts or um, possibly a doodle pop. I haven't decided yet. This page will just be a layout page, so nothing there. This one I'm going to skip for now because I'm still trying to remember. This is going to be the layout page. This one I don't have anything for. Haha, <laughs> that's where I got stuck. Okay. All right, so this page is going to be stacked pockets. So we've got our base pocket. It's five by nine. Starting with the nine inch, you're going to score half an inch, turn, half an inch again, turn, and half an inch. And yes, these are pre-scored just so that I didn't forget by the time I got to assembly what it was I was trying to do. <laughs> because it wouldn't be the first time. I've got two pieces that are again just scraps from somewhere else in the book. Uh, three and a quarter by nine. Both of these are going to be scored at half an inch on each end only on the nine inch side. 
And then I've got a flap that is three and one eighth by eight and five eighths. We're gonna score that at half an inch on the eight and five eighths side. Okay, so let's go ahead and miter. Okay, so on these two, I'm only going to miter on one end because we're going to do something different with the other end on both of those. Okay, so now let's go ahead and miter our pocket. We're going to cut through those bottom corners like so. Go ahead and glue the bottom flap on this piece in. I think I need to round that corner. I'm not going to do that just because it's going up against that outside edge. It would help if I actually got on the right one, huh? Side edge, like so. Okay. Now, both of these pockets, because this we're going to leave these open at the bottom. Okay. So they're just going to kind of, so it's going to basically be all one piece down. So what I want to do is go up about an inch and a half. What I'm going to do, I'm actually just going to do this on my scoreboard. And I'm going to score this at the inch and a half mark just over to the score line. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut from the straight side, so the side we did not miter, up to that score line, and then I'm going to cut across that score line, okay? Because what this is going to do is this is going to tuck underneath our main pocket, so there is still separation, but it's not going to be bulky. So if you wanted to seal along the edge on the bottom edge, you absolutely could do that. That did not look right for some reason. That's fine. Okay. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to fold this over and burnish, and then I'm going to check, because you can see there, kind of, how that's like slightly longer, or not longer, whiter. So I'm just going to make sure that that is even with where my score line is. Okay, so this we can go ahead glue down. This piece will then, in theory, slide in behind, except it doesn't want to because, of course, they're different sizes. Okay, so I'm going to miter this just enough get it to slide down in there. OK. 
Okay. And then we'll glue those tabs down. Which really, I don't know that we need the second one. Maybe we'll just leave it to one. I think I am. You know what? I think I am. I don't think I'm going to use the second one. I think it's fine with just the two. And then at the top, we're of course going to put our flap that's going to come down and just, you know, kind of be a closure over that pocket. Now then, let's go do the page we skipped. Okay, so for the other page that I completely screwed up, you need two pieces, four by three and seven eighths. We want them just slightly shorter. We need two pieces, one and a half by nine. We are gonna score these. I knew where my scoreboard was. That would be incredibly helpful. I think it's buried, so we're going to use the little bitty one. It's not going to matter. Okay, so we are going to score these at half an inch on each end. Go ahead and no, we're not going to glue these in yet. That's where I got screwed up last time and why we have a mess. All right. Then you need four. I know I had four of these working. Let me go. Oh, there it is. Four pieces, one and a half by three and three quarters. Okay. I am going to start by scoring each of these at one inch. one inch and then two and five eighths okay so one inch two and five eighths Three of, three of these, all four of these, and fold and burnish.
Okay. And then we want to glue these. So you just want glue just where it overlaps. Okay. Just like so. Okay. take these two pieces, you're going to slide two of these on each. When you do this, make sure your seam is towards the top, it's facing up, okay? And then we're going to fold and burnish on our ends. Okay, so there's your seam on those, there's your tabs to glue, okay? These are going to go in Like so. Okay. All right. I'm going to turn my book sideways so I can see on this side. I'm going about an inch ish from the top and gluing that down and about the same from the bottom okay I'm going to open this up I'm going to go ahead and put my matting in but I'm going to leave it loose on one side so I can get that little tab underneath. This way, put glue on my end. little slider pieces. What I'm going to do is find the center of my page. I'm going to make sure that these are sitting so that where they touch is right in the middle. Okay. Surely we can do that one at a time. So let's just get our center pieces lined up here. Okay. I'm going to take one of these. We're going to glue it on top of those two tabs. Check that I'm centered up. I'm centered up. Keep this here to make sure it's even. I'm gonna make sure I can't slide them over too much. And then 
I'm just going to center this up top to bottom so you will have some of your pattern paper peeking out top and bottom. And then this will slide. Okay. So now, since we've already got one of them with it centered up right there at the edge, we can go ahead and get glue on our other two pieces. And if they're not sitting snap in the center, it's not going to matter because these will both slide both directions, but they will stop once they get out at the end. So I can just line this up right up against that piece. And then this will slide open and closed. Okay. There we go. Um, so I will get back to matting. We're good there. I've, that one's okay. This one's okay. Here I added a cut apart and matted um, top and bottom. Here, this is the only thing I got fully matted because I went back to do this other one. I was like, okay, something's wrong. I did add magnets. So I've got a magnet under here and under here, and then I've got my tuck spots. And because, of course, I should have not be doing this today. This one I actually put down too far up there, so I'll end up doing something smaller to tuck in up there rather than one of those cut aparts, but that's okay. Um, and you can see there, I forgot to round my corners on those when I matted them, so they're not matted, but that's okay. All right, so I'm going to get back to matting the rest of the book, and I'll come back and show you what we're going to do with our cover for the interactive element on the cover. You know, I know better than to record late at night because then I do really dumb things that make no sense. So we got all of our little flaps on here and then I actually had this bottom piece wrong as you can tell from all of the paper that has been pulled off of it. So we're going to fix that. All right, so the base is attached, the pages are attached. What I've got here is a one inch by 12 inch strip. It's just a scrap. I'm not gonna score it, I'm just gonna fold it so that it's hanging out maybe a 16th of an inch over the edge of the base, okay? So that it slides easily. I'm gonna take this other little scrap, this is five by one. And I'm going to glue this onto this piece. Okay. I've got it all the way at the bottom to make sure that I'm gluing this straight for one thing. And then I can too make sure I'm not too tight. So it slides just fine. Okay, so now I had you cut four five by seven pieces. You needed five. There is actually supposed to be one more on here. And this is where, as I was recording that, I kept just kind of looking at it going, something doesn't seem right. That would be why that was the thing that was not right. So you'd actually need five five by sevens. And of course, this would be much easier if this was not already in my book, but it is, and we're going to work with it the way it is. Okay. So then, I'm going to push this all the way up. I'm going to push this up until it's lined up with the bottom of the bottom flap. Seriously, I went to map this. I'm like, why is this not... Like, it's just not sliding right. I was like, what have I done wrong? And then I got looking at it because, of course, you know, I did this the other night at like 1030 at night when I really should have just gone to bed. I was trying to get done. And then 
here I am, two days later, trying to mat, going, something's not right here. Okay, so just the last lap is doubled up, and then we'll glue that down. Now, this will slide the way it's supposed to. <laughs> All right. So, back inside cover. So, know what this is for. <laughs> yes, I do. Okay. Okay. So, because this is like all, you know, staggered, we're actually going to have acetate that's going to come across the front. However, I don't want to score the acetate because it just, it works. You can absolutely do it, but it tends to be kind of in the way when you're trying to close, open and close the, the book because it doesn't want to get completely out of the way. So I have a piece that is three and a quarter by nine and a half. We are gonna score this three and a quarter at the top at half an inch, all the way back around and half an inch again, okay? I'm going to miter on one side. And fold and burnish. And we need to put that down before we mat and put our pocket that's going on the back inside cover. Okay. So, I don't want to miter this piece. I do, however, want to take my 3 8 inch score tape and put that on here. So it's on here before we go to put the acetate on and before it's in the book because it will be easier to put on if we do it now. Okay. Then I can go ahead and fold and burnish. And then glue this piece little part that we mitered on the back of the book. Okay. So this is going to be all the way to the outside edge. We'll run all the way top to bottom. And there we go. Okay. Now I can go ahead and put down my matting and then we can do our pocket that goes on here. So this stuff for the back of this is the very first thing I cut after I did the base. So of course, by the time I get back to it, I forget what that piece is. <laughs> Are any of you really surprised by that? Because really, you shouldn't be at this point with me. Okay, so. That much is ready to go. Our pocket is nine by six and a half. We are going to score this at half an inch and five eighths on all three sides. Our closure for our pocket is seven and three quarters by five and a half. With the five and a half at the top, we're going to score at half an inch and five eighths because apparently I didn't do that. Did all the rest of them except that one. Okay, we'll go ahead and miter this. And I'm going to miter this. So this I am actually going to go all the way across for that highest score line as opposed to through the middle of the two score lines. The 
because it's only an eighth of an inch gusset just to give it a little bit of wiggle room that um, truly it's not going to matter. Okay. And do all of our score lines. And then that's just going to go down just like so. And actually, I think this was supposed to go at the top. Or is this the wrong size? Okay, that'll go down there, but we'll just end up because we're going to have that tab, which I would normally not do. But I think what I'll do is just do another little strip of like borders or something in there um, underneath that. So when you open the flap, you go, oh, look. So I'm going to go ahead and get this in. I'm going to go up about an mm, inch and a half or so from the bottom. however much of a gap you want, but since I am going to end up putting a border strip underneath that to cover up my tab here, I'm actually not going to glue this on yet. I'm just going to tuck this in here until I figure out which border strip I want to use, and I will space it accordingly. Okay. All right, so we're good there. We're good there. This is the piece that I need to figure out still, and then this one. So let me find my stuff for that one and I'll be right back. Okay, so I probably should have started with this one. So we'll see if this works out like I want it to. <laughs> First off, we have two flaps that are six by six. Okay, you're going to score both of these at half an inch. And then we're going to mitre. and fold burnish. It's like where did my thing go? Both of these and glue these in top and bottom. Centered up on the front of page two. around. Okay. Like so. Then I have two pieces that are six by twelve. These are both scored three, six, and nine, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fold in half at six and burnish, okay? And I'm gonna fold back the three, Okay, so 
so that you have an N or a W, depending on which way you have it turned. We're going to do that on both pieces. You're going to mat underneath this, okay? So I've got my mat. I just want to make sure I've cut this right. And we're going to go ahead and glue that down. correctly and I don't turn it over the other way is when you open this up it's going to come out like so okay so but okay I want these two pieces to meet in the middle so that when this opens up, they're still going to kind of stand up, but I need them centered in the middle here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my ruler. I know my page is nine inches, so I'm going to have an inch and a half on each side. Okay. So basically, I'm gonna use my I'm gonna line my ruler up. So I've got my inch and a half, my inch and a half, right? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna use that to glue down in the middle. Okay. So, inch and a half, inch and a half, right there at the center, six inches. Okay. And because I've got my ruler up against where those hit on the side, then I know this is centered up where it needs to be here. Once you have one of them down, then you can do the other one. Okay. However, just to make sure, I'm going to go ahead and leave that there, just so I have something to go up against. Like so. Still slide it off. Need to get over just a hair. There we go. Okay. So now fold this over, fold this down, and I can go ahead and get glue all over the back of this section right here. So, do the same thing on the other side. Like so. And yes, they are going to overlap in the center, just like that. But, we're going to do, most likely, a cut apart with a magnet underneath it over here. We will do that 
later on in decorating. This is just going to be a layout page. The other side of this is also just going to be a layout page because we've got enough going on with the inserts and everything else. We're absolutely going to be fine. So I am going to go ahead and get some of the other matting done. Um, when I go to put the magnet in here and like here and however I decide to close that up, I will record that as well. Um, this one's done. This one's done. That one's done. You could add, if you wanted to, um, a flap on here like to open it and then push it, which I might end up doing just to reinforce where I really tore that corner up. Um, and then we'll work on the really cool element I'm going to do for the front. So I'll be back. Okay, so for the cover, I have a piece of the adorable snowflake acetate that is nine and a half by nine and a half. So it's the same size as the back cover, okay? Because of course our front cover is shorter so that you see your graduated pages in there and you'll see them through the acetate. I haven't figured out what I'm matting on here yet, but that's fine. Okay, so what I'm going to do is this is six and a half, right? Yes, yeah, six and a half. Hold on one second. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I need to cut a little hole in this in the middle. Okay. So I'm basically going to Sorry, my husband is not home at the moment and my son is of course thinking he's starving to death. So <laughs> All right, so my cover is six and a half. So I am going to go in. I'm trying to think the best way to show you how to do this. So I'm going to go in three and a quarter inches, and I'm just going to kind of lay my ruler about where that is. And then I'm going to center Okay. So here's my center. Okay. So what I want to do, and I'm actually going to get, I was going to get a, there it is, okay. So where did my Sharpie go? Okay. So there's my center there. Okay. Um, let me see if I can zoom in so you can see this better. I think that is better. Okay. All right. So, there's my center here. I'm going to go over about there. I want about an inch. And an inch. inch and an inch. Okay, so I've got a one inch square there. If you have a one inch circle die that you want to run this through your die cut machine, if you've got, you know, like a bigger one like the um, switch or something like that where you can run a bigger piece through, by all means, go ahead and do that. Um, sorry, let me get the Sharpie off my ruler. Otherwise, this will work just fine. Okay, so I've got marked where I want to cut this out at. Okay, so I am just going to take my craft knife and I'm going to go right along that line I cut. It's going to be covered up. You're never going to see it. So if you don't cut exactly on where you marked, it'll be just fine. 
can. All right, just like that. And actually, this will probably with just a teensy bit of rubbing alcohol will probably come right off of that acetate. Yep, exactly off. Okay, so we've got a hole. What I'm gonna do is I've got my little um, kid in the tube. We are gonna make him a spinner that's gonna sit on the front of the album and turn, okay? What I have here are just some three quarter inch um, circles that I just did with the circle punch. I did eight pieces for my scraps and that's going to keep him, because we only did an inch for our square there, it's going to give him a little bit of room to move, but not tons, which is what we want. Okay, so I've got eight little circles there glued together to make our little spacer. Okay, I have this little let it snow piece that's going to go on the back side there, but I've also cut um, two circles, both one and three quarters, with my circle punch. That are going to help reinforce that. If you would like to put him on um, some cardstock and fussy cut and reinforce him, you could do that. I may end up doing that. I haven't decided yet. For right now, I can go ahead and build my little center mechanism without actually attaching him yet. Okay, so let's come back out. I'm going to move my cutting mat. And you'll remember on this piece how I had you go ahead and put um, the uh, score tape on there. Okay, this is why. Because we're going to lay this on here, line it up, it should be the same top and bottom. I'm going to put that up against that score line and then I'm just going to fold this over and down on top of it and burnish. So there's our cover, okay? All right, so what I want to do is I want to take and lay this flat and put center up my bigger circle behind it. I really should move this mat because everything just kind of tends to stick to it more than I would prefer. Okay, so I've got that. I'm going to take my little stack of circles and I'm going to glue that down right in the middle. And then I'm going to glue this one on top. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of watch and make sure I line this circle up with the one underneath it. Okay. So that will stay there. You have your little piece that spins. But we also want to put a magnet in here because that's how this is going to stay closed. So, where'd my magnets go? Haha, <laughs> that would be the question. Okay. So, let me grab my magnets. And some score tape. That's probably too long. Alright, so I'm just going to center that magnet up on my little spinner piece. I'm sorry, Gus is having a fit because, you know, it's 39 minutes until dinner and he's going to do this until I go upstairs and feed him in 39 minutes. Because this is what he does. All right, so that's there. I'm going to lay that on there for a minute. I'm going to 
another piece of tape. this. Make sure it's lined up over my edge here. And there we go. It's that easy. I'll figure out what I'm going to mat under here in a bit. Um, this little piece is just going to go right over the top of that to hide our magnet there. I actually might cut another piece of um, uh, cardstock, which actually I wonder if that, I'll take a two inch punch, Glitter cardstock. Is that going to be too wide and stick out behind my little guy? Darn it, it is. Okay, so no, we won't be doing that. <laughs> if anything, I will just find another scrap over here somewhere. I've got a whole stack of them. And I'll cut one more one and three quarter inch um, just to cover that up. Just because of course the artisan cardstock is definitely heavier than my little chit chat piece there. We'll just reinforce it even more. Get to the glue over there. Okay. All right. So then that will go on there. This whole thing closes up like so. This little guy will go on here, and when he's off of the cover, he'll actually spin. So, um, I believe that's about all I needed to show you still. Um, it's okay, you can laugh. I know the cat's in here having a fit, and now <laughs> my son's in here. Um, stuck in there. <laughs> as always, he's not stuck. No, he's like... I know, because he's wound up because he's mad. He hasn't had dinner yet. All right, so that will be about it. As always, thank you for watching. Um, if you end up making this project, I sincerely hope somebody does because this was definitely a labor of love. Um, by all means, share that on um, Country Craft Creations Facebook group, Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations. You can also share it with me on Facebook at Scrapping Under the Influence, and you can share it and tag me on Instagram at Scrapping Under the Influence. And you can also tag Country Craft Creations as well. Um, so as always, thank you for watching and I'll be back soon with another project.